In this video, I am going to walk you through 10 levels of shader in 3D workflow. I will also share the practical use cases and pros and cons of each level. So you will know exactly when and where to use the shaders in your project. And by the end of this video, you will have a clear and deep understanding on how shading works. So let's begin. But before going to our levels, let's understand the basics. A lot of people, especially beginners, get confused between three common terms, shading, material, and texturing. So let me break it down for you. Imagine you have created a 3D model. Right now, it is just a shape with no color, no details, nothing interesting. If you want to make it look like a metallic, glossy, wooden, or anything else, you need to create and assign a material. For example, let's say I want this cube to look like a metal. I will create a new material material and modify its properties like color, roughness and metallic values to give it that metal look. Now the process of building and creating a material is called as shading. Think of it like this. If a 3D model is a sketch then applying color and style to it is known as painting. That process of painting in 3D is called as shading. Simple right? But what is textures? Well sometimes you don't want to create every single detail from scratch. Maybe you want to create some labels, brick or fabric pattern. And that's where texture comes in. A texture is just an image but in 3D we call it a map. For example, color map. In different 3D software it is also referred as base color, albedo or diffuse map. This gives the surface its actual color. Roughness map, also known as smoothness map, it controls how shiny or matte the material will look. Metallic map define metal areas. Normal map fakes surface details like bumps. Ambient occlusion map adds soft shadows in creases. Displacement map adds real depth to the surface. All of these names can sound fancy but you will get hang of it. And now you are ready to dive deep into 10 level of shading. I will explain each level primarily in Blender but also briefly show how it's done inside Unreal Engine. So we have a simple cube here and first thing I will do is to create our new material. Delete this default principal BSDF and press shift A and search for diffuse shader. Let's connect this to our output. We can change the color from here. One cool thing you can do is to add a noise texture and control this by a color ramp to get amazing results. In Unreal just right click in the content browser, create a material and we use constant node for the color. Obviously, it is way too basic and that's where our second level comes in. Now we can use principal BSDF. I will change this value until it looks like a blue metal. Add a noise texture with a color ramp and plug into roughness. Looks good. Try plugging this into metal or normal. It gives us different results. One amazing thing you can do is if you link this into alpha, then go to your material setting and change both blend and shadow mode into alpha clip. You can see it created this transparent metal and after adding similar method in base color we can create this amazing material and that's why this is so powerful and it is similar in unreal engine as well there is literally nothing to explain but we are still lacking the details so we go to level 3 Instead of just plain colors, we can now use different textures to make it look good. We have a Susan here. We are going to make her look like a rock. Not that rock, but the actual rock. Really, nigga? For that, we need base color, roughness, normal, displacement, ambient occlusion maps. Also, it is perfect time to tell you that combination of all of these textures is also known as PBR textures. So I will open Polyheaven. Now, there are two ways to bring this into Blender. Manual way is to add image texture node one by one and faster way is to use node wrangler add-on go to the edit preference search for node wrangler and enable it now in the shader editor select your principal bsdf node press ctrl shift plus t and it will let you choose all your pbr maps at once blender then connects everything automatically this saves time and keep things organized but just connecting textures is not enough we need to make sure they fit the model properly and that's where our uv mapping comes in uv is defined how a 2D image wraps to a 3D model. Every face of your model corresponds to a specific area of the texture. You can see this in 
using UV editor, scaling or moving the UVs changes how the textures appear without changing the actual geometry. To unwrap the model correctly, go to edit mode, press U and select smart UV project. You can also manually mark seams which are like borders telling Blender where to cut and flatten the model for better texture fitting. This gives you full control and makes your texture look clean and realistic. You can do the same thing in Unreal Engine but the process is a bit manual. You have to drag and connect each texture one by one. There is no shortcut like Blender's node triangular at least for now. So we go to level 4 which is our anime level. Yeah that's the name I came up with. What? This one isn't exactly a level but rather a different shading technique. In the last level we talked about PBR textures but here we use something called as non-PBR textures also known as stylized or toon shading. As the name suggests it is commonly used to create anime style or cartoon like visuals for your scene. Now I am already working on a dedicated in-depth video on how to create an anime shader so I won't go into too much detail here. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. But I will show you the use case and pros and cons on your screen and level 5 is where you can call yourself an actual alpha artist in this level the best thing you can do is to use multiple shaders together and combine them for example i have this pillar you can see i have material a and b which then going into a mix shader and the factor is controlling how much i want to show each material you can even plug in a noise texture and color ramp to dynamically control the blend giving you full control over the surface this is where your journey as a pro shader artist begins. But this is nothing. We still have 5 more levels to go. In Unreal Engine, you can do the same thing by using Material Layer Blend. Just stack and control materials in similar fashion. Level 6 is a chad level because in this level we are going to use procedural materials and it makes us absolute chad instantly. Procedural materials give you total control over every detail of your texture. In level 3 actually I mentioned that the textures are not seamless and this is where we solve that issue. For example I have this plane with a procedural tile material. Watch what happens when I increase the scale. There is literally zero pattern repetition. No matter how large your 3D object is. It will always look clean and seamless. The same approach exists in Unreal Engine. Procedural materials are fully supported. Now if you are too lazy like me to build everything from scratch, here is a shortcut. Just download Blender Kit, search for your desired material and add keyword procedural in front of it and you are done. By the way, you can also combine procedural material with your regular material. This will also give you interesting results. And this is where you come into a elite level, place where your creativity becomes infinite. Because here we are going to use technique that surprisingly many people ignore, shaders combined with texture painting. But what is texture painting? As its name says, you are actually painting on your 3D model. To start, go to your shader editor, add an image texture node. Now here is an important point, texture resolution matters a lot. If you use a standard 1K image, the paint might look blurry or low quality. So depending Depending on your system, try to use 4K or even 8K image for crisp and detailed result. Once the image texture is added, switch your workspace to texture paint and you are ready to start painting directly on your 3D object. Now the best use case for this method, if you are blending two different materials with displacement on it and you can use this texture as a mask. For example, I have this pillar right here and I wanted to reveal the plaster on the pillar. And thanks to Ko Phillips, he figured out this method by doing it with help of very clever texture painting where you can create this kind of imperfection in your 3D objects. You can check this video by the way, link in description. In Unreal Engine, it is slightly different. This is known as vertex painting. Now you are not painting a texture, but you are painting on your vertex. So the only disadvantage is that you need a high poly object in order to paint on your vertex. Level 8 is where you become a Sigma because this will save you a lot of memory and confusion. You see the biggest disadvantage of procedural node setup is that we cannot share it with other 3D software. For example, if I wanted to share this 3D model with someone else or I have to sell it. But there are so many people who use different software and even if I am not selling any 3D asset, I still need to bake the textures because I need to optimize my scene and save the memory. And for that purpose, we have to bake the texture. And to do this, we have to go to render setting. Then we choose each map individually. One best thing we can do is to create high poly model and then create a low poly model. 
then we can bake textures on the low poly model go to your material create a image texture with 4k resolution and select it make sure your uvs are proper or else the baking will mess up now select your high poly object first then low poly object second make sure your image texture is selected before you bake then hit bake wait for a few seconds depending on your system it will give you an image now make sure to save this image and do same process for all of your necessary maps and if i export this 3 3D object and open this in any 3D software, you can see all the textures on this material are pre-baked. Level 9 and 10, I'm going to explain you together. The only reason to explain this together is that I can't show you in Blender or Unreal Engine because these two levels go way beyond that. They rely on industry standard software that use custom built shading system, tools that are only available inside top tier production studios. Studios like ILM, Beta Digital, or Digital Domain develop their own custom shader tools and use advanced softwares like Autodesk Arnold, Houdini, Z. Brush, SolidWorks or Rhinosaurus 3D. These are the few software which many people haven't even heard about before. These studios use custom shading languages like OSL or GLSL and entire teams work together to build extremely complex layered material system, physics accurate CAD shaders and procedural texturing pipelines. And here is the thing, these shaders are so heavy and complex they won't even run on regular computers. That's why artists working in these environments are rare use Blender or Unreal Engine. Not because it is bad, but because both of these softwares are open source and makes it easy to reverse engineer the confidential tools. And big budget production studios need strict control over their technology. Movies like Avatar, series like Stranger Things or The Mandalorian, they all use this level of shading. Studios literally build entire custom software ecosystem just to achieve realism. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. If you think I missed anything, let me know in the comments and I will see you next time.